Let's give applause to all the people who are putting the hard work. Who work on this campaign from can't see in the morning to can't see at night. And upstairs with Rev. It's coming down soon. And we will not be denied. Because we are on the right side. Check this out. We're on the right side of her story and his story. You got to say both now, and I'm, I'm down with it. My wife put me in check. Deep check. Thank you, Tanya. We're in a very pivotal moment in the history, history of this country. We've seen a lot of shenanigans, skullduggery, subterfuge by the former president. I don't call him by his name. I call him Agent Orange. So we can't be led astray, hoodwinked, bamboozled. <laughs> We've been through that, and you know what I'm talking about. We the land of Plymouth Rock. There you go. And so, in closing, the struggle continues. And for our people of color today, our ancestors are looking down upon us. And they're telling us to continue to do the right thing. Thank you. Hey, folks, we are live here at the uh, Senator Raphael Warnock Victory Party, the Marriott Marquis Ballroom C uh, here in Atlanta. Spike Lee just finished addressing the folks here. Uh, we are looking for the res results that are coming in. So far, about 71% of the vote is in. Uh, it is uh, tight, tight. Um, and so uh, it was real tight. Um, uh, and sorry, Israel Houghton just finished performing, and uh, he said he was calling after me. Saw me walk by. He's rushing off to the airport. I was trying to get him over here, uh, but uh, we couldn't get him. He's flying to L.A. Uh, so Israel performed a little bit earlier, and so we're going to be joined in a second by Latasha Brown, Cliff Albright, co-founders of Black Voters Matter, uh, Congresswoman Je Congresswoman elect Jasmine Crockett of Texas. She's here as well. Earlier, I saw Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis. He stopped by. He's flying back to Texas. Uh, actor Omar Dorsey uh, is going to be here uh, as well. Uh, and so, hey, guys, what happened? My vo our volume went down. What happened? My volume went down. I hear myself. I, okay, how's my? No, no, I'm hearing myself talk. And all of a sudden, I couldn't hear myself. Am I still up? Okay, cool. All right, so just checking. So, folks, uh, we are back. Uh, we're back live here at uh, the Warnock campaign. Again, uh, we're going to be um, uh, chatting with a bunch of different people, wait for them to come in. Uh, and we're going to seat her in a second, uh, and that is a uh, congresswoman-elect, uh, Jasmine Crockett. And so let's go ahead and get her in the chair. Uh, and so we got folks uh, who are already lined up um, and ready to go. And so um, just get the headset on, and we're going to chat a little bit here. All right, folks, um, again. So joining us right now uh, here in Atlanta, uh, Texas, she's going to be replacing Congresswoman Eddie Bernice Johnson uh, in Congress, uh, and that is uh, Congresswoman-elect Jasmine Crockett. Jasmine, how you doing? All right, then. Well, we got Jasmine's audio. We're good? All right, folks. Uh, so, Jasmine, uh, it's tight right now. It but is. I, people keep hitting me. They're like, oh, my God, what's going on? <laughs> I'm trying to remind them the largest blue counties. 
of, of Fulton County, Gwinnett County. They're Cobb not County. in. It's okay. When they come in, they're going to come in like a train wreck. Yeah, they are. It's going to be like a train coming in. Yeah. Trust me, Herschel Walker ain't going to win 20% of those votes. So if you talk about 200,000 votes come in, it's yeah. going gonna, gonna to be a cakewalk for Center One. Absolutely. It's time for Herschel to go ahead and walk it on out. Uh, I'm done with him. Like, listen. I'm stressed that Georgia made it just this close. Like, what's going on, rural Georgia? Like, come on now. Like, the reality is that this is a guy that truly is not qualified to be a dog catcher in the state of Georgia. So uh, I'm so excited for what I anticipate is going to happen for the good Senator Reverend Warnock. Uh, because I truly believe that our large urban centers are going to make it happen tonight. Uh, you know, one of the things I was trying to explain to people, uh, look, 1.83 million voted early, and then, of course, you have uh, Election Day. And what I was trying to explain to folks, you've got to count numbers. I said, and the same thing happened in 2020. It was like real tight, old soft, worn out during the runoff. And folks were sitting here going, oh, my God, it's tight, it's tight. I was like, y'all, chill out. <laughs> I said, when this thing gets to 73, 75, 80%, and then when those blue counties come in, you're going to see uh, the rush. And that's exactly what happened. No, it's absolutely right. I mean, when we think about it, if you're living in, say, a small town of 2,000 people, you can get that 100% in really good, like that's, really that's, quickly. That's easy. But when you're talking about, like, urban Atlanta, when you're looking at Cobb County, when you're looking at these Cobb very County, large. the Cobb County. Yeah, when you're looking Fulton at these County, large metropolis. Gwinnett, no, you can't count those votes that fast. So, no, it's, it's going to be fantastic. I absolutely believe that, number one, people stay woke. As much as these Republicans right. are like, we're not going to be a all that wokeness, absolutely. People say, wait a minute, yep. Herschel Walker got a little too close. So some people that were chilling out, they decided, you know what, I need to wake up and get my butt to the polls. One second, uh, Atlanta Mayor Andre Turner is now speaking. Let's go to the stage. Hey, you know you from the ATL when you play Jeezy every time you walk out. <clears throat> this night, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And you know why? Because we are marching on to victory tonight. My friend, our senator, our pastor, our brother, Raphael Warnock, has done an amazing job in the United States Senate. And so people all across the state of Georgia have gotten to know this man and seen his leadership, seen his integrity, seen his capacity, his compassion, and now they understand what real leadership looks like. And what I know is that by the end of this night, we're going to be sending back to the United States Senate, Raphael Warnock, to represent us. And listen, people ask, like, yeah, we know he's cool, we know he's smart, but why do you support him? And so as the mayor of the greatest city in the whole world, I just had to say it, as the mayor of the greatest city in the whole world, um, you got to have an ally in the federal government. you got to have a supporter that knows what your needs are and help you be able to serve the people of this city by being able to help things happen from the federal government level. And so this group of people, each of you, back in 2021, just a year ago, all of you rose up to be able to send two Democratic senators to the United States Senate. When we sent Ossoff and Warnock to represent us we flipped the balance by being able to also have Kamala Harris there to make that decisive vote. To make that decisive vote in a number of occasions. I'm going to give you two, because they didn't even tell me how many minutes I got, and I can filibuster with the best of them. But I'm not going to hold you up. I'll give you two examples. One is we now have the first African-American woman to be on the U.S. Supreme Court Katanji Brown Jackson, and that was done by a decisive vote. Were it not for Warnock being that decisive vote as well, we would not have that happen. And two, the second thing is 
the American Rescue Plan Act, that vote, the Biden infrastructure plan, were it not for to have 50 United States senators plus one, we would not have the American Rescue Plan. And for a mayor, that, 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 that means so much. We were able to use those funds to help people that are experiencing homelessness. We were able to use those funds to help this, to be able to get people from haphazard housing and dilapidated buildings, get them into affordable housing that's clean, dry, safe, and warm. To be able to help people that are uh, starting small businesses, be able to help folks that are in a small business that is just trying to survive COVID. We took those funds that were given to us by the Biden administration because of a decisive vote by Senator Warnock, and we were able to help people be able to get through some challenging times. I'm not talking about somebody that I think is going to do a good job. I'm talking about somebody who does a good job for this city, for this state, every single day. And so I say to you, just like the great Congressman John Lewis, I tell you on this night, keep the faith. I tell you on this night, never give up. I tell you that on this night, victory is ours, victory is ours, and it's going to be a, a great story to tell. I know a little bit of something about close elections. I know something about close elections, and I know something about never let them see you sweat. So tonight, we're going to party, we're going to turn up, because we're in the ATL, we're going to do it for the A, we're going to do it for the GA, and we're going to do it for the USA. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. That was Atlanta Mayor Andre Turner, folks. Uh, the excitement is building. Uh, here's the whole deal. Folks have been texting me saying, oh, my God, it's tight, it's tight. But the reality is, folks, Senator Raphael Warnock is going to be reelected to the United States Senate. Uh, Dave Wasserman, you often follow him. He just tweeted, I've seen enough. Senator Raphael Warnock defeats Herschel Walker in the Georgia Senate runoff, giving Democrats a 51 to 49 majority in the Senate. The bottom line is, it's the math, Congresswoman Elect Rocket. When you look at it, the number of blue counties that are out, the number of votes, knowing full well how black folks feel about Herschel Walker. <laughs> Bottom line is, he ain't getting black votes. And so although people right now are freaking out how tight it is, you're going to see Warnock go up by 20, 30, 40, 50, 60,000. I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being 150 to 200,000 vote victory by Senator Warnock. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? People kept saying... What difference does it make? We got the majority. And I'm trying to let them know these courts, they're stacked up against us. I'm trying to let them know the reason we don't have voting rights is because we've had to deal with two senators that seemingly didn't want to and, get and, off the and, bench and, and act and, like they was on our side. And so, like, as many votes as possible because you're going to have races in 2024. Yeah. So you don't want to have to sit here That's right. and, uh, uh, you know, uh, try to win yeah. another seat. You want to lock this yeah. one down and build on it in 2024. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're saying that 24 doesn't look as good for us right. as 22 It's the number is. of red states. Yeah, yeah. It's the number of red seats. You know, the chances of us flipping them, who knows? Probably about the only one that's possible is Indiana. Yeah. Well, and here's the deal. We don't know who's going to be at the top of the ticket for either side right now. Go. And that really drives turnout. The top of the ticket always that's drives right. it. So if we've got the excitement, then we're in a better position. But if for some reason the excitement lies on the Republican side, the chances of us flipping something slim to none. Not to mention, you know, the Supreme Court, they threw us a Hail Mary with their nonsense, right? Yep. So that was one of the things that was fueling voter, voter participation. I don't know if they're going to go ahead and give us any more Hail Marys right there as we're going into another election. Uh, tell folks what life has been like for you preparing to head to Congress, going for the Texas State House, the U.S. House. It's a whole different world. It is a different world. But listen, it's so much better than it was on the other side. I mean, listen, in the State House, they've got the State House, they've got the State Senate, they've got the Governor's Mansion. At least I'm walking into the U.S. House, and unfortunately I'm walking into a minority 
but they don't have the Senate. They don't have the White House. And so I've got an opportunity to do some things. Um, I'm really excited because this week I was elected as the first black woman to ever be elected as freshman representative to leadership, which is amazing. Unfortunately, we've not had a black woman in Democratic leadership in the U.S. House since. Guess this. Well, let me see if you know. When was it? Say it again. Shirley Chisholm was the last black woman that was in Democratic leadership oh, in the U.S. House. And so now myself and Laura Underwood are the first two black women to enter House leadership. So it's it's sad, but, you know, it is what it is. So often hold Democrats up, Hold like, up, hold up. I got to stop you. You're not to groove this I, I got to stop you <laughs> because today, y'all, is December 6th. Happy birthday, Frankie Beverly. Oh, here we go. Here we go. In, in, in fact, let, hold let on. me tell you happy belated Founders Day because I figured you was going to tie it into that some way. Somehow. Hold on one second. <laughs> I got I to gotta do this here. I got to do this here. I got it on speakerphone. Yeah. I don't know if we can hear. Yeah. Hold on one second, y'all. So y'all know what I'm doing. I'm calling Frankie Beverly. Which he should be celebrating his birthday. <laughs> All right, I'm going to send him. Let, let, me, let me do this here. I'm going to send Frankie a video, y'all. Y'all see how black I am. California. Yo, Frankie Beverly, I'm live on Roller Martin Unfiltered. We're here at the Warnock Victory Party. It's your birthday. They playing We Are One. So we're to send you a birthday shout out. I'm sitting here. Con Happy birthday, Frankie! Congresswoman-elect Jasmine Crockett of Texas. So we just had to send you a shout-out, Frankie, live on the air. Holla, my brother. All right, you were saying. I don't even know what I was saying. Long story short, listen, y'all need to show up. Y'all need to vote every time there's an opportunity to vote. That's all I want y'all to understand from this election. You never know what can happen. Nobody ever saw Georgia going blue two years ago. Yep. Georgia went blue two years ago. Right now we're on the verge of making sure that we go blue again. We've got all the power. All you got to do is show up and exercise it. And we can change not only this country, but we can change the world. Absolutely. All right. Congress woman elect, we're gonna let you enjoy the party. Absolutely. We got other people to chat with. Always good to see you. Thanks a bunch. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, then. All right, Deshaun. Uh, go get uh Mark Thompson, Latasha Brown. Bring them on on my Dorsey right there. On my Dorsey. Right there. Just bring them all in. Just bring them all in. So on my Dorsey for Queen Sugar. He's taking some selfies. And so uh here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, y'all, that's how we do it here. Security sitting there holding folks up. But y'all know how I rock it. Go ahead and take a seat right here. Y'all see my man. He was playing a cool cat who knows poetry on BMF. You saw me. You see my queen, Sugar. And every week he was on Ray Donovan. I was hoping he got killed. <laughs> My man, Omar Dorsey, what up, baby? What's happening, Roland? How you doing, brother? So, y'all, last time me and Omar hung out, we were in Vegas yeah. doing the NABJ. I had an extra ticket for Lionel Richie concert. I was like, Omar, you want to go to Lionel Richie concert? He was like, say what? <laughs> Yo, it was crazy. It was the night of my life. Oh, I'm just telling pull, you. It, uh, pull the mic up. Oh, sorry, right here? There Boom, you go. There we go. No, it was the night of my life. Uh, Roland is is, is is so famous. He had us. In the back, first, Lionel Richie was like, my frat brother's in the house. Where's Roland Martin? Everybody was like, uh, who is this guy? <laughs> and then, then uh, we go to the back, hanging out with Lionel Richie, talking to him. Man, Roland always, he always set it out. And every time I come out with him, he always sets it out. Yo, it was crazy, crazy. So, Omar, man, huge night, huge yes. victory night. Yes. Huge victory night. Yes. Bottom line is they haven't called it yet, but blue, blue cows are coming in. Yes. Fulton, DeCab, DeCab, Cobb, Senator Warnock is going back to D.C. He's going back to D.C., and I'm so proud. You know, I'm a native Atlantan, 
I'm a native Georgian, and man, it's, it makes me feel so good when we have somebody to represent my state who I can be proud of, you know, um, and he is loyal to the soil. I remember the work he was doing with Troy Davis. I remember all the stuff he's done way before he became senator, man, and, you know, I'm just so happy. I've been on a trail with him for this whole week, been campaigning in Macon, campaigning in Savannah. We've been everywhere with him this week, so I'm just so glad, man. We're going to party tonight, Roland. So, man, look. There have been folks who have been putting the work in, making phone calls, yes. knocking on doors. I was just, Israel Hout has been performing all around. Uh, yes. See, Nice has been all around. That's my brother. I mean, folks really said, hey, we got to get Warnock back to D.C. That's what it is. You know, because what happened was D-Nice hit me up. It's like, yo, I'm in your city. I was like, well, what you doing? I'm doing stuff for um, Reverend Warnock, the Senator Warnock. I said, I'm coming with you wherever you go. And, you know, I got, I, I just rolled his coattails all around the state man and it's been beautiful it's been so lovely to see all the people coming out last night we were in the west end and it was such an amazing different diverse group of people there man and reverend warnark man he said one of the greatest things he said herschel walker was a great running back now we're gonna get him running right back to texas well see man look i tell people all the time all the time that Look, you, you're a celebrity, but you're still a resident. A hundred percent. You're still a constituent. Yes. Yes. And that's what I'm saying. So whenever, you know, when I'm with you in D.C., man, the people who represent me in that state, I mean, in, in, I mean if it represent my state in that city, man, they have, they have to make me feel proud. I, you know, it, I don't want to be embarrassed when somebody's like, oh, that's your senator or that's your congressperson. Like, no, nah, no, nah, they don't represent me, but they do. They, they do, and that's why I'm so glad that we're bringing them a man right back to D.C. Well, look, man, uh, it is, the thing is, tonight, of course, two years ago, he was filling the unexpired term of Johnny Isaacson. 100%. Now, he's there for the next six years. Next six years, man. I'm so excited about that. I, he, and, you know, just the things that he does for this state, for the you know, for the farmers, and, and, and this for, you know, for the underprivileged, this was way before he was the senator. You know, these are the things that we need to, to be representing us. Like I said before, this is what we need. Absolutely, Doc. Well, look, man, it, 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 it's been uh, fantastic. We've been all over the place, yes. going to those small towns. We've been to Statesboro, Swainsboro, yes. Hinesville, uh, Sanderville, oh, wow. uh, Fort Valley State, yes. Athens, going everywhere. And that was the other piece. You can't just focus on Atlanta yeah. or DeKalb or Cobb or Gwinnett. You gotta go where black folks are: Columbus, Albany, uh, Augusta, yes, Macon, County, all those places. All of those places, yeah. Like my, my my wife, she's from Macon, so that is her spot. Bibb County. My brothers are from Augusta. That's Richmond County. We saw those numbers coming in from those two places. We saw coming in from Augusta. Uh, I mean, not, not from from uh, uh, Columbus. And of course, uh, Warnock from Savannah. And, and he's from Savannah. You know, so these are the places. It's not, like you said, not just Metro Atlanta. We're talking about a whole state. And I'm looking to see those numbers coming in from all of these different places. Well, man, look, uh, it's going to be victorious. Trust me, this race is over. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just They've been hyping the whole drama. Yeah. All those smaller red counties came in earlier. They, 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 but, they had 100%. But like, the well, this at blue freight train listen. is about to come through. Listen. Hey, listen, when I saw my, my county, DeKalb County, had 91%, I said, that's what we do. <laughs> That's it. Oh, my baby. Always glad to have you, baby. Always, baby. I appreciate it. Right, on the sure. blackest political show on this night. You better know that. <laughs> you know it. I appreciate it, baby. I love you, brother. All right. Coming up next, come on up here. One of y'all, come on. Cliff Albright, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, about to join us right now. Uh, I told y'all how we do it. Uh, yo, we doing this thing, y'all. Uh, we doing this thing. So, if y'all been seeing the Black Voters Matter ads, we've been running uh, three, four times a day on the Black Star Network. They got the blackest bus. But, Cliff, you on the blackest show. That's right. We know that, Roland. We pull, know pull, that. Pull the mic up. Pull the mic up. Oh, yeah. That's right. The blackest show in America with the blackest host in America, That's Roland it. Martin. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for all the exposure that you've given to, to our ads, for being here in the state consistently. You've been a consistent friend of the state. And what it looks like, you know, we've been saying for months now that we won't black down. And now that we're at this point, I think we can clearly say that black folks ain't black down. And that at the end of the day, we're going to be at the heart of this victory for uh, Senator Warnock. That's why I kept telling people. 
I said, look, if y'all want to give to the Warnock campaign, fine. I said, but y'all got to send your money to our black groups that are underground. Georgia Stand Up. Black Voters Matter. Uh, we could go on and on and on yep. because, look, y'all were out there, man, knocking on the doors, going to those places, having the concerts, right. uh, and going to the hard-to-reach folk That's right. where black folks were. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying that we did every form of outreach that we could do. We did probably 10 million text messages. We had digital ads on social media, streaming on your show, uh, reaching black voters two, three, five times. We had phone calls. We had door knocks. We did smoke signals. Uh, those ravens that they got in Game of Thrones, we were sending those out too. We did everything that we can do to reach out to black folks. And and black folks responded. And at the end of the day, at the end of this night, we're going to see, we're already seeing it in some of the South, um, South Georgia, Southwest counties, even if uh, Senator Warnock didn't win, what happened was black folks cut into those margins. And so this this uh, this drop-off that they were expecting that we would see in black turnout, it didn't happen in the rural counties. It sure didn't happen in the metro Atlanta counties. But, man, this, this is why I keep trying to explain to folks, you've got to be on the ground. Yeah. You've got to touch people. they got to feel you. you got to have that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the food deliveries, That's all right. those things are a way to reach people. I keep saying to these white strategists, you got to stop just putting all the money on TV. That's right. you got to touch the people. That's right. you got to touch the people. We were out in the street all day today just on the street corners, going door to door, having food trucks at different places. We were in a community. We were at the 12th District, the Atlanta City Council 12th District, a place that had four polling places that had some of the lowest turnout during their early vote. We looked at the numbers. We know our communities. We looked at the data. We went to those communities. We touched them. And we had a lot of people who would stop by and say, thank y'all for doing this. We don't usually get this kind of attention. We didn't get this attention back in November. We're glad that you're here now. And I think that we're going to see that, that that type of effort and that the effort that the rest of the ecosystem did, that that's the thing that turned the corner and, and allowed the turnout to go up, even though people were projecting that there would be this big drop in black turnout on Election Day. And, and look, and it was also understanding and said, okay, fine, y'all want to change the rules? We can't pass out water. That's right. We can't pass out food. And so when, when and I went out, uh, and, of course, Georgia Stand Up, where they That's had right. the food trucks right across the street. That's right. And they had the water That's and the right. snacks. So they said, come by before you get in line or come by after you get in line. And so as, uh, as uh, Deborah told me, she said, they said, fine, we can't be 150 feet away. We're going to be 155 feet away. That's right. That's right. And that's what we did. And we did that in a bunch of places across the city and throughout the state. We had groups doing the same strategy throughout the state, even in the rural areas. Because at the end of the day, can't nobody tell us that we can't feed our people, that we can't support our people when we're online. We will never let somebody keep us from being able to do that. We might have to find a way around it. We might have to move five feet further back. But we will always be there to support our folks especially when we're waiting on lines that shouldn't be that long and are only that long because of voter suppression. And see, that's why I keep trying to explain to people, I keep trying to explain to people when we're talking about uh, these numbers, mm -hmm. that what they don't understand is when they say, oh, voter suppression isn't real because look at the numbers. No, we've always had to jump over that's hurdles. Right. That's right. We always, you know, the same people that say, oh, there must not now, be now, voters. Now, y'all know this is a black U.S. Senate when they playing swag surfing, when they playing swag That's surfing. Right. Okay, y'all. We were, hey, Mark, Mark, come out, come on. We, we, we got to end the oh. interview. We got to go out there and, and surf. We got to go out there and swag surf. Come on, get up. <laughs> Y'all <laughs> know.
Rico Swag Serving <laughs> is the third national black anthem. That's right. Oh, Lordy. The blackest show in America, y'all. The blackest show in America. <laughs> y'all know Swag Serving is the third national black anthem. <laughs> <laughs> Lift every voice and sing. That's right. Before I let go. That's right. And swag something. Right. Y'all know. Oh. Uh, stop watching MSNBC. That's right. That's right. Keep it right here. <laughs> that's how we do it. Oh Lord. So one of the points I was saying, <laughs> we've always had to jump over every hurdle right. they put in front of us. Yeah, yeah. You know the same people that like to say, oh. You didn't have voter suppression because y'all were able to come out and vote and y'all were able to set a record. Those are the same people that say, oh, Harry Tubman helped 100 people get off the plantation. I guess it wasn't that hard to get off the plantation. No, that's not what it means. What it means is that we have always done an amazing job of overcoming obstacles, and the same thing applies with voter suppression. Yes, we set records during the early vote. Uh, over the past week of early voting. But guess what? When you've got voter suppression that takes you from three weeks of early voting to just one week of early voting, you better set a record on every day of that early voting. you got to because you're trying to squeeze all that into a shorter period. So that doesn't mean that the suppression didn't exist and the obstacle didn't exist. It just means that we were able to do an amazing job of overcoming it and that black voters responded. Well, man, and that's why I just keep telling people that, yo, and I keep saying, if we get our numbers mm -hmm. to 65, That's right. 70, 75, we can dog walk elections. That's right. That's right. And that's what we had to do. We had to run up those numbers in the early vote. and But then we still had to show up on election day. And we did both, right? They weren't ready for us to do both. They said, okay, they may come out big in early voting. We're going to try to whittle that down. But, you know, even if they come out, we got this election day strategy, and they're not going to be able to come out. We did both. We came out during the early vote, and we came out on early vote. But I, th but I think that we got to recognize this, because this is going to be the narrative. And we just talked about it, right? People are going to say, oh, Warnock won. Oh, you had big turnout. Uh, see, we told you that there wasn't the voter suppression. And, and that's important because guess what? As we go into this new congressional session with now 51 votes, and I'm saying it now, I'm calling a race. I don't care if they call the race. Okay, no, no, I'm no, calling no. a race. race over. Right. And so even if we get to 51, the, at the end of the day, we still got to deal with voting rights. Right. What's happening tomorrow? You know what's happening ro tomorrow, uh, Roland. In the Supreme Court, they're arguing that Harper Moore case, which would allow some states, to, their state legislatures, to do whatever they want on voter suppression without having to be responsive, not only to federal law, but not even being responsive to their own state constitutions, not even being responsive to their own state courts. So we've got to keep pushing on this question of, of, of uh, voting rights, and we can't allow the fact that we overcame voter suppression in Georgia to let them create a narrative that says there's no need for those voting rights. Well, again, man, we're going to keep that pressure on them uh, and keep pushing. And what I need people to understand is, and this is the last point, and speak to this here, race is over. But this is the end of one process and the beginning of another. That's right. Now keep the same folk together right. and now say, do what you said. That's right. Or do what you promised. That, and that's accountability, right? And that's what this process is about. We were saying that to people today. We're not out here in these streets just trying to get you to show up on this election for one race or one candidate, right? We are just as much about what happens the day after the election day. That's accountability. We got to get people to act on these issues that our communities have said we want action on. We've done that to a certain extent. Over the past couple of years, we've gotten things like infrastructure. We've gotten things like, like investments in climate. We've gotten things like funding for HBCUs. We've, got, we've gotten a, a Supreme Court justice named Katanji. And so we've gotten some stuff, but we still got to keep pushing to get accountability on yep. the rest of our agenda. That's what this process is really about. All right. Cliff, my man. always a pleasure, my man. Always, I always. It, baby. All right. Thanks a bunch. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, appreciate it. All right. Uh, Anthony, you have a, a commercial over there? You have you don't have any, any commercials? All right, so let's do this here. We're looking for one of the speakers here. What's up, Kelly? How you doing? Y'all good? What's going on? Kelly, you want to chat with me? Don't ask you any hard questions. Put this behind you. Okay. Put this on you. Okay. Yep. Does it tighten it up All a little right. bit? Yep. Just press it down. Yeah. All right, Kelly Fletcher. 
Tell everybody who are you. Okay. Tell everybody, tell everybody who you be. Hi, everybody. Kelly Fletcher um, of Atlanta. Um, I'm here for Raphael Warnock. Super excited about its potential, and we're going to win tonight. So um, everyone here is excited. We want to have the best person in, in place, for uh -huh. sure. We want to have the best person in place. Absolutely. And so folks are really engaged, really focused in trying to make sure that he got back to Washington, D.C. Right. Talk about that. Talk about the energy after he had, after people were people upset he got to the runoff. Mm -hmm. But the reality is they were still committed to make sure he won. Right. So um, I know personally last week I went to out to eat and at the Ponce de Leon Library, the line was wrapped around the building every single day of the week. So I feel like that's um, showing you how everybody feels, how serious we're taking it. Um, I personally voted out, um, voted at Morehouse as an HBCU grad, North Carolina A&T. I wanted to make sure I voted at a HBCU. And so I know a lot of their students were there as well. So um, we're taking it seriously. And I think people are doing everything possible to get him in again. Well, it, you know, it is the, the thing here, uh, people understood the stakes. Uh, they knew Republicans were going to vote for Herschel Walker. Right. Uh, they knew it did not matter. And so our turnout was going to be the key. Right. Uh, and the bottom line is our folks did their job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, it's uh, There are definitely some people that I can tell have changed how they're voting in the runoff um, that voted for Herschel last time. But just kind of having real conversations with people, everything is not about the traditional campaigning um, and flyers and everything. That works with some people, but other people need a real conversation. And what are we talking about here? What's at stake? And I think those personal conversations change the game for some people. You know, when we talk about the issues as well, I was, I was spending time in a lot of the rural places in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And they were all saying Medicaid expansion, Medicaid expansion, right. and, been, and seeing these rural hospitals close. And so that was a stark difference between Walker and Warnock. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I um, and coming used to live in Savannah, and that's a big place with a lot of voters that take it seriously. But some of my work has taken me to um, rural Georgia before. But, again, it's those key conversations that explain to people that we, um, you know, there are different things at stake, and Raphael Warnock is here to a uh, to help with those things. I mean, talking about farming, he cares about that. He's working across lines to actually really make a difference in that area, and that impacts people in rural Georgia, and I think some people realize that. So, Warnock wins. What do you want him to do? You know, I think the what, what, first... What are your issues? My issues. So, I care about women's rights a lot, and so I know that as a Christian woman, and for Warmock to be Christian and to care about women's rights is a huge deal. So I do want to hold him accountable personally to um, to see that through and where that takes us. So um, that for sure, um, rural rights, like living in Savannah, there's a lot of people and a lot of meetings. Savannah is not the most rural place in Georgia, but there are people that care about what's going to happen with their land. And so I'm hoping that his rural conversations, his farming conversations are not limited to certain parts of Georgia, that they cover a lot of places in Georgia that have land. And so um, holding them accountable so people of color have access to own land, to properly use the land, and have access to the grants um, and resources that everyone else does too. And one of the things that I keep saying, and I say almost all the time, is mm -hmm. the election is the end of one process and the beginning of another. Mm -hmm. That we have to continue to be engaged to drive an agenda forward. Right. Um, the the voting side of things, that's got to, you know, Stacy's done a great job and really pushed things. Um, we need to make sure that Warnock, after winning in Ossoff, continue to make sure that those rights are in place on the level that they can um, to make sure that, all Georgians can vote, but all Americans can vote, and to be, you know, voting in that way um, when they're in D.C. All right. Yeah. Always good to see you. Absolutely. Great and, to see you, it's, too. It's always good to have a, a good party back here. Yeah, it's a great party. It's very Atlanta, and you're welcome in Atlanta anytime. You know but, it. I appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank Thanks you. So much. Absolutely. Mark Thompson is about to join yeah. us. Okay. Come on, Mark. There we go. I see, I see you on the dance floor real soon. Come on, Mark. You didn't tell me how to be ready. Huh? So you didn't tell me how to be ready. Oh. Oh, that's yours. Sorry. Did I put mine on? You got your phone? Oh, got Mark, take a phone. seat. All right. See you later. See you later. Thank you. All right. Anytime.
All right, Mark Thompson, the host of Make It Plain. Uh, he joins us right now on the blackest political show, the blackest election coverage out here. Ain't nobody else doing like us. Uh, no, Mark, no, indeed. Waiting for the um, final tally. Warnock is going back to D.C. Yeah, and some people who we know and trust, first of all, thanks for having me, and thank you for your coverage and allowing us to swag surf with you. Uh, <laughs> Some people we know have already called it. So it's kind of being drug out. We know the other counties are coming in. We know that they are favorable to him and to the uh, to his electorate, his voting base. So I think I think it's a wrap. He's going back. Um, the numbers continue to go up. So unfortunately, it's being dragged out a little bit longer than we want it to be. The, the, the thing that, I, that, that is key here, black people show up. Yeah. And this is what happens when we're on the ground, active, focused, and our grassroots groups are activated and reaching folks where they are. That's right. Uh, that's important, especially when you consider the fact this is the fifth time in two years uh, African-American voters and all voters have had to vote for this seat. And so it's really quite an achievement that – Black voters overcame several obstacles. First of all, we talked before about the mainstream media is pushing this narrative of this big red wave. That was to discourage us from voting. Didn't work. Then we know there's a level of fatigue, especially in Georgia. People in Georgia have had to go vote so many times. This runoff situation, y'all, is 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 got to something's got to be done about that. This is crazy. Um, and Warnock has had to go through this, what, the runoff at least twice already. Right, so this is his fifth election. This fifth election in two years. So obviously people are going to be fatigued, but we proved that people will still come out to vote when their well-being, when their lives depend on it. And the most important thing, Ro, I think the thing we always have to remind people of, we ran into a couple of brothers on the street. I mean, our Black Voters Matter doing canvassing. We ran into a few brothers on the street who said, uh, voting doesn't make a difference. And I said to them, when you don't vote as an African-American, you're really voting because your lack of presence for who you want to vote for actually benefits the person who you otherwise wouldn't vote for. That helps. So just hypothetically, if you don't vote and you don't want Herschel Walker to win, when you don't vote, you help him to win and vice versa. So I think that's a message we've got to continue to push with all of our people that a no vote is really a vote. And so you might as well go and vote for someone you know, someone you support, someone who's going to make a difference. And it goes without saying, Raphael Warnock will help us get what we need to get done in terms of restoring voting rights, John Lewis Act, police accountability and police reform, uh, restoring women's bodily autonomy. All of these things are important, and he'll be able to help us do that. So this is, this is a good day. So... The thing, the thing we have next is, again, he wins. If you go back, 51-49, Democrats um, had that had that one vote margin. It's not 50-50, which also means that Vice President Kamala Harris doesn't have to always stay in D.C. Right. to vote. She now is also freed up yeah. to move out the country more. Part of the reason why she couldn't travel a lot. Good point. Because she'd always be there at the break of time. That's right. That's right. That's right. She had to be present. And that probably uh, hindered her. Some have complained that she's not been as visible. Her portfolio has shrunk. Uh, really now there's no excuse for the, uh, the, the protocol because she doesn't have to be there as much. And for the White House um, to release our sister uh, to go and be more visible and do some of the things she needs to do. Now, I'm going to say this, and I've said it before. Um, most vice presidents... As soon as they take office, there is some type of runway in place right. for them to ultimately ultimately uh, succeed the incumbent president. Um, and that should be no different for this vice president. She shouldn't be disqualified for that from that just because she's a black woman. And so now there's no excuse. We want to see more Kamala Harris, want her to build her profile so that whatever happens in 2024 and beyond, there's no reason why she should be disqualified. From being from running for president, is this the blackest man uh, campaign you know, victory party you've been to? Yeah, it's very black. 
music's black, we black, we dancing up in here. This is a great celebration. And and it's also historical because we are here really where a great deal of the civil rights movement was based um, in a community that is known for its HBCUs, uh, in a community that re is representative of black economic business and success in terms of a city. So this is historic, and it's about time that we've been able to show just how meaningful the vote is. Our friend Tamika Mallory um, just posted something on her uh, uh, Instagram, which she said, black people have saved America again. And look at all these elections. Black women had to stop Roy Moore in Alabama. He was going to be on the Senate. Once again, the African-American electorate has stood up and showed out. And, you know, we just want to make sure. That oh, they not. They not going to play King George. <laughs> Don't leave. Go ahead and leave. Little thing, wow, wow, wow. And one woman got to have three. Ha! Not, yo, I told y'all, this the blackest party. They got King George. She don't give a eye. When they tell. Go ahead and leave. <laughs> oh! Woman to lift you down. One woman just lift me up. <laughs> and she don't give up. Go ahead. Oh, out the door. Come on, King George. Yeah, it's real. First of all, I got some it's fool real. here. Official Don. Roland comes off his fake. Official Don, get the hell off my page. Oh, I got to keep on rolling. Oh, them guns that keep on going. Come on, y'all. Oh, yeah. Come on, look. Oh, they got King Joe. Natasha Brown, ladies and gentlemen. That's Ray to Mark Live on the Black Star Network. Amen. Lord have mercy. Hey. Mark, I got to catch up. We got the mayor here. Mayor, put the headset on hey, right there. Good to see you, brother. All right, all right. Huh? Take a seat right there, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, I was just saying. This is the I'm blackest good. victory party <laughs> ever. First of all, we got the blackest show. Yeah, yeah. We were swag surfing early. Swag surfing right. up in here. You ain't going to see that on MSNBC and CNN. <laughs> they can't keep up with this crowd, man. Uh, the Roland Martin Show, all of us here in the ATL, uh, swag surfing. And you can tell, we ain't got no one camera. Oh, yeah? See, they, see? They got that one camera over there. Yeah. No, we brought the whole thing. Oh, my God, man. Y'all got all the cameras, bro. I see it. I see it. Y'all live in 4K, 3D, and all that. <laughs> That's it. Man, folk been texting me all night. Oh, my God, it's close. It's close. I said, chill. The train is coming. That's right. Listen, I'm over there looking at the county breakdown. The Cab County is still at 70, 80 percent. That's 20 percent more in one of the largest counties in the state, and it's mostly Democratic. And it black. ain't like Hershel gonna be getting. That's right. That's right. Hershel ain't that. getting that. And then Chatham County, where uh, Warnock is from, which is Savannah. They are still sitting at like 75%. So we got some really important Democratic, mainly majority black counties that are still outstanding. Herschel ain't going to get this thing done tonight. No. It's going to stay Warnock. Well, first of all, I just saw it. Warnock up 1,900 votes. And I told everybody, y'all, it's going to go 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Because two years ago, same thing. Folks were stressing. I said, y'all. Yeah. The train is coming. The train is coming. I said, the train going to come on time. Yeah. And when that train come through, yeah. I said, y'all going to be like, oh. That. Yep. I said, yep. Fulton. Fulton. Gwinnett. Gwinnett. DeKalb. DeKalb, DeKalb Cobb. Cobb. And Clayton. Yep. Clayton. We get them folks in. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. And so, 
you know. If he didn't have a 200,000 vote lead. Yeah, he need to be way up before them people come in. Right. And so our people here in Metro Atlanta they are doing our job, man. We knocked on doors. We went out there and made phone calls. We sent text messages. We were out rallying, making sure people knew. Because this is a, a different kind of state. You have to vote twice. And you think about how hard it is to get people out to vote. But in Georgia, we have to do it twice when we have a runoff, which means we have to motivate people again, educate them, inform them, and then tell them what the consequences are. And so as a mayor, the consequences are steep. In a democratic city, but in a state that could go either way, you need to have an ally like Raphael Warnock up in the U.S. Senate that makes things happen for the city. And so, but for Raphael Warnock, we would not have Kentanji Brown Jackson, our first African-American U.S. Supreme Court justice. That vote took place here because Warnock and also. And then the American Rescue Plan Act, where cities like mine had millions of dollars to help with COVID relief for homeless, for uh, small businesses, for affordable housing, also for public safety, on and on and on. I could talk about how impactful my friend Raphael Warnock has been. And so tonight we got to go home with the victory trophy so that this man can go back to the U.S. Senate representing Atlanta, representing Georgia, but representing the United States of America. One of the things that I keep trying to do, I know they did. You see this? This is the AT era, bro. No, they, this is they, the AT era, they had to play man. Too short. When you playing <laughs> this kind of music at a victory party, now I know hey. at, the, at many victory parties they're playing the Bee Gees. Right. And they're, <laughs> they're playing Bono you see, and you two. And I y'all love understand, too. the man's a Kappa. I'm a new. I'm an alpha. So y'all know I want to hit that A step. Founders Day was two days ago. <laughs> I so saw you. I so, saw your so post. It's a little hard when that come on. You are ah. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's the HBCU headquarters, man. Hey, of the United States, man. <laughs> well, the point that you were making, I tried to explain to our people. We gotta connect the dots to understand how DC power drives Georgia, yeah. drives Atlanta, drives South um, uh, Full South. Yeah. Because and too many people like, my man, except don't matter. I'm like, no, you don't understand. There's a direct relationship. You just don't understand how it's linked. Yeah, it, it all works together. You want to have political friends and relationships across the country. What's going on? What's happening? Oh, we up. We way up, like we said, like we said, we have done our job. Warnock has done his job, and the people of this state are making a clear decision. Even though this state was red at once, now we're back blue, in my opinion, and now you see what it looks like. And and then, I mean, to be to be frank with it, man, I'm on the Roland Martin show, the unfiltered show. And, and, it was I, a and, and I own it. It's a slap in the face for them to put what they think was just a black man up right. against a black man. Right. Black people. Woo! They called it. Boom. They Boom. called it. Right now. Right now. Right now. Woo! Boom. Let's go. Boom. All right, I got to hit the stage. Hey, Go. man, we did our job. Yes, now, sir. Man, let's, let's I appreciate it. it. All right, now, appreciate it. now, when all your viewers come to the ATL to visit their cousins, they got a mayor named Dre, and they got a U.S. citizen named Rodney L. All right. All right, baby, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Latasha, we told y'all this thing was over. We told y'all that train was going to come in. We told We told y'all an hour ago this was over. We told y'all an hour ago, this was over. What do we tell y'all? Oh, all we do is win. What? Everybody hands go up. And they stay down. And they stay down. And they stay down. Up, down, up, down. All we do is win, win, win. Hey! Oh! Hey! hey. <laughs> we
We told y'all. Let's go. I'm trying to tell y'all, Natasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter, Black folks did they damn thing. Black folks did that thing. We told them, don't come play at us. They underestimated us. They underestimated our power. They thought all they had to do was get a black face to put on a white agenda, flank him, and because he had run a ball, that in some way we were going to support it. And what we did is we showed them, don't play with us. Don't play with us. Don't play with us in GA. And our folks, what? look, they were in those lines. They showed up doing early voting, and they said, well, the GOP going to turn out on election day. Oh, no, we did our thing. You know, but part of it is we also were responding to the voter suppression. That at the end of the day, there were so many barriers that we actually had to deal with in this particular election. You know, in the last time when we voted, in 2021, we had eight weeks that we could actually vote, um, early vote. And then, I mean, eight votes before the election. This time it was truncated in half the time. We only have four weeks. In addition to that, what we also saw is a major drop in mail-in voting. So there was a 1.2 people voted in mail-in voting last election cycle. What we saw in the midterms, only 0.2 million people voted, which means there were a million people who had access mail-in voting that didn't vote. And then to add insult to injury, here we have the Secretary of State, who is supposed to be the, co the constitutional officer to not only govern the elections, but he's responsible for getting citizens engaged in elections. And instead of him literally wanting to expand access, he actually sues to keep from actually having an election day on that Saturday because of a Confederate holiday. You know, and so I think that, and then the Warnock campaign and others actually sued him, sued the state, and as a result, they, we actually had early voted and over 90,000 people voted on that day, that whole weekend, we, we broke records. And so I think that black folks sent a message loud and clear that one, we will not allow you just to suppress our vote, that two, you can't just pick a candidate with a black face and think that and can run a ball and think that in some way we're going to go for that. And I, number three, that we have real serious policy concerns in our community and that we're going to stand up. Black folks showed up and showed out. So I just want to thank you. Thank you, Georgia. We did it. Well, and the thing is, they thought after 2020, this ain't going to never happen again. Absolutely. We're going to change the law. Absolutely. To, to stop y'all. No, no, didn't happen. Because we keep coming. We keep coming. And I think that's what we have to recognize, that this isn't just relentless. about participation. We have to be relentless, as relentless as the other side is to help suppress us voting, to try to suppress our vote. We have to be more relentless in making sure that we get out the vote. Because this isn't just about participation, as you know, Roland. This is really about power. And this is around how do we stand in the fullness of our power, our collective power, and literally push back those that seek to try to marginalize us. You know, the, 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 thing that, the thing that I just try to keep getting our folks to understand is if we would just believe in us. Oh, that, that is the issue. If, 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 if we voted at 65 and 70 and 75% of our numbers, we could sweep this state. Oh, absolutely. And sweep other states. Absolutely. This isn't really about the candidate or the parties or the campaign. You know, as one of the phrases that we use for Black Voters Matter is it's about us, because that's fundamentally what we believe, that ultimately when we show up, we win. Part of the voter suppression wasn't because we were losing, it's because we were winning. And I agree with you. I don't think that the, the biggest issue is to get us to believe in this system. We know that this has been a racist system that has marginalized black folk from the, from the time we've been here. We know that there is still, within every single system, was built to protect white interests. We understand that. Our goal, for particularly at Black Voters Matter and our action fund, is to get black folks to remind black folks to believe in us. Like, we should be supporting black media, right? That's why I'm so happy that we're here 
because you provide a platform for us where we can be unencumbered, we can tell the truth, we can share our analysis in a way that really speaks to our perspective. This, we also need to make sure that we understand that when you are a minority group, that you, your power is your collective power. That when we show up in numbers, that's what makes the difference. And so that's another thing that I think that we've been able to drill and organize around in Georgia. And then I think our message in Georgia has been very clear that this campaign is really about us. That we're going to send a message that if you come for us, we're going to treat you accordingly. If you come for us, we coming back and we coming back strong. And see, that's the thing for me that... Um, when our folks believe, when we believe, and they see it, so here's my deal, black folks. We showed it in 2020. That's in right. Georgia, Biden and Harris, with Osaw, with Warnock. Now you come back two years later, and you do it here. And the other thing is this here. This election here should send a signal to those white Democratic media strategists. That's right who pissed off the Mandela Barnes campaign. Right. That, we, they ignored Milwaukee. Oh, they could have won that. Sheriff they could have won North campaign. Carolina. Could have won that. Absolutely. They made no effort right. to activate the black base. That's right. Because, you know, there's a difference. Let me tell you about. And what, Tim Ryan that's right. did not target black people in Ohio. That's right. Go ahead. I mean, I think that that's if the difference with black folk. If black people only supported or only engaged what was like an obvious win for us. Well, I mean, what would we have supported? And we need the black candidates to demonstrate, hey. We need the black candidates to actually say that part of my base, who is going to carry me over, who my foundation is, are black voters. And so what we often see is we see, just as you talked about, we see white consultants from the Beltway to actually make these decisions on telling candidates to spend all of their money on air, right? When you've got to have not only an air war, this is an air war and a ground war. You've got to feed the ground and the field and also make sure that you're in the air. But even when you're in the air, who are you talking to? That's when right. I talk to young voters, Young voters are not looking at network um, news That's right. or mainstream news. They're looking at the Internet. They're, look, they're getting their news from the Internet. They're getting, my niece told me the other day, I asked her how she was getting her news. She said TikTok. I was like, TikTok? Right, so there's unconventional ways that they're actually getting their news, and we actually have to be able to speak to that. And I think that black, we understand the new nuances. Right. Right. of how to communicate to our people. We understand the nuances of what to communicate to our people. And over and over again, what we have shown is that when we're leading those processes, bam, we get it done. Look, I mean, here's a perfect example. We came on live, <clears throat> we came on live an hour ago. 1,100 people. We are now at 8,400. That's just on YouTube. I'm not including the app or Facebook and the rest of them. And, and the thing, and this is the other piece that matters. Spike Lee flies in. They tell me he's coming. I hear Spike. Spike comes by. Omar, Omar Dorsey comes by. I hit the mayor. He comes by. You and Cliff and Mark. And the other thing is, is for black folks, for black candidates. That's right. For black folks, talk to black-owned media. Absolutely. Don't ditch us. Absolutely. And ignore us and run the MSNBC and CNN. Absolutely. Help build this ecosystem. Absolutely. Right. Because we need you. We need black media so that we're literally telling our story. We've seen where some of this and white not hoping they call. I right. mean, look, you ask people to put out videos saying, we miss Tiffany. Well, here's the deal. Absolutely. Tiffany got fired by MSNBC. All person who can fire me is God. Say it. What you say? I, I think that's a word. That's a word, Roland. Come on, what you saying? I mean, but 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 that's the whole I understand. point. And so we cannot. I just keep saying we can't be in the position where we're asking somebody else, please, baby, please, can y'all put us on? Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. We gotta have a direct conduit to our people. Absolutely. I mean, I think this is the evidence of it. I think when you look at the Black Star Network, 
one, I think one of the beautiful things that you've done, Roland, is that the community actually rallies around and you gave an opportunity for us to support you. What The one thing about black folks, you know, and I've actually done a lot of work in philanthropy, is that we're actually, given our income, we're one of the largest givers. Yes. In the country, yeah. right? Normally, the we give to the church, right. right? Because that's an institution. That's an institution that we have history with, that we're identified with, and so we really have to recognize and understand that Black independence means Black freedom, right? And in order to get Black independence, it's gonna take Black dollars, right? Yep. And we need dollars to support this kind of work, so that we have this platform, so we can have a Spike Lee that can come up. Because part of the reason why we're coming is because of relationship. We've got relationship with you and understand the importance of this platform and the importance of getting the message directly to our people and in see, a way that is unfiltered. And see, what I keep telling our folks that why they got to support the work that y'all are doing, y'all are doing this stuff 365. That's because right. in the past, it was always, well, let's jump start it with lectures around. No, because after this, they're gonna, next year, they're going to be local mayoral elections. Absolutely. School board elections, DA races, judicial races, <coughs> state rep, state senate, gubernatorial. Every year, there is an election somewhere that impacts black people. Absolutely. Because for us, it isn't about an election. I want people to be real clear. It is really around how we building out the infrastructure. How do we build out the entire for ecosystem power. for power? We're unapologetic around that. And we also recognize that while voting has a tremendous amount of power, it is not the only source of power, that it is one very, very important key. And so for us, we're engaged in a process 365 days out of the year of really getting our people to center this notion of we've got to be a power. Even tomorrow, you know, we actually have our bus going down to Louisiana. A lot of people don't know that there's still a runoff in Louisiana. We don't stop the work. We show up and we ride because we need power, as much power. When your community is under attack, when you are under-resourced, when our children are going to schools that they don't have what they need, we cannot afford to just step back. We've got to be unapologetic about literally seeking power. And one of the ways to do that is to build out the ecosystem where we have communications, that we can get our voices and our ideas and our information out to us in a way that's going to speak to us. That means that we've got to have organizations like Black Voters Matter that's not about a candidate right. or a political party. Right. We can be as black, unfiltered as possible to speak to our people the way that we need to speak to our people and work with our people 365 days out of the year. We, we'll call out the Republicans and we'll also call out the Democrats because for us it's really about we have our interest, our interest is really around black power. And whenever we feel that's under attack, we've got the freedom and the independence to call it out. And one of the things that, again, I'm consistently saying is that with the work, with the work that y'all are doing, yeah, you arrest tomorrow. Well, we ain't resting tomorrow. Our bus, we leave at 6.50 in the morning, Well, headed I, down to Louisiana. Well, I, I leave at 6.30 here to Houston. <laughs> what I mean is we all got to recharge. We got to recharge. We got to rest. But when the election is over, we must stay activated to now make them do what they promised. Oh, absolutely. We go s s immediately into accountability mode. I mean, part of, I think, the process has been that we have – we will we have been reduced our political engagement in this country has been reduced to participation and that hasn't just been on black folks that has also been on our elected officials that quite frankly all they wanted to do is to round up the negro vote let's just round them up come vote for us and then go on back to your communities we know what to do and we know what that, that has gotten us and so what we have to do is we have to stay engaged in a way that really is about power it goes beyond participation. This ain't about just participation. We want power, and we have to be unapologetic about it. But when you want power, you can't stop. When you want power, you have to continue to build and build and build. And that's what we've done. We actually, when Cliff and I started the organization in 2017, we didn't have any money. 
right? We started with, I think, $1,200, our first donation. And then we wound up in getting engaged in the Alabama election where we raised like $200,000 in nine days and gave that money out. You know, but we were very clear that we wanted to create Black Voters Matter Fund, an organization that would support and put money on the ground to grassroots groups. And so after this election, I'm really proud that what we have done over the last five years is we've actually distributed, regranted, i.e., we've invested over $30 million into black led grassroots groups on the ground. That means we've actually written checks and give those resources, given those resources to them and continue to work with them as a thought partner on the ground consistently. We didn't see in Georgia where two, st- two counties that actually went for Walker actually flipped this, ba- this last election and went to Warnock, and that was actually fueled by black voters. Well, look, y'all are doing the work, and I said it before, uh, folks, when we launched this show, uh, ask me, uh, Lee Saunders, was our first partner, and we launched it. Uh, Black Voters Matter has been a partner from the beginning as well, along with Melanie Campbell, Reverend after William J. Barber. And and I appreciate it because, again, I tell folks, it's like what, y- what y'all do. Y'all, this stuff ain't free. This ain't free. Like the travel, the per diem, the staff, these cameras. That's right. I mean, I, I, mean, I keep telling y'all, y'all watching at home right now, literally what's sitting before you right now, is about $150,000 worth right. of gear. And so that's what I was trying to explain to our people, that we can't keep saying we need it if we don't fund it. Right. When we got it, right. we got to sustain it. Right. And that's the key. That's and the key. so the work that y'all are doing is phenomenal. And so congratulations. An amazing, amazing general election, this runoff election. Uh I know y'all leaving early. Uh, next year, y'all going to Louisiana. What's happening there? In Louisiana, there's a runoff. There's a uh, local, um, there's a runoff happening in Louisiana in this last election that the election is on Saturday. And so our people are out. I'm trying to get enough energy to get my mind right to figure out how we're going to go this next week. But we're going to, you know, my brother Cliff always says, start strong, finish strong. So we're going to finish strong. Now, I'm give me some sleep, right? I would give me at least one wait, spa wait, treatment. Wait, 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 one wait, spa baby. treatment. Look, that's why I had to get the, the sleep ring <laughs> so I can literally track my sleeping stats so I know if, if I'm getting the right rest uh, because same thing. Absolutely. Uh, it's been crazy the last three months. we got to get our rest. we, we got to get our rest. Job. I do want to say to black people and the black folks that are watching this, because oftentimes we hear kind of critique of what black folks don't think and what they don't do. Y'all, we are the bomb. I just got to say, That's right. black folk got it going on. Given all that we have experienced in this country, right, given all the barriers, we continue to rise and rise. And so there have been so many, not only the black voters in, in Georgia, but there have been so many people who have come to Georgia to support us, to help us, to volunteer on the text messaging campaign. We've texted millions of people. You know, there have been so many folks who have actually come and volunteered and even provided their platform for us to get our word out. So I want to say to you, Roland, thank you, brother. You always create a space for us, and we're grateful to you. And I want to say thank you, black people. Thank you for believing in the power of blackness, standing in it, feel blessed by it, and keep it keep, keep it going, y'all. We All won't right. black down. Well, Tasha, always good to see you. Good Great to job. see you, brother. I thank appreciate you. Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, tomorrow's going to come over here. Tomorrow, you'll take a seat. Tasha, I appreciate it. Uh, folks, uh, we are, look, y'all, I am, um, tomorrow, come on. And I'm going to say this, and, and I, I'm, I'm being serious, y'all. Uh, I am, I am, I'm almost in tears tonight. Because this is precisely why I created this show and why I created this network. And and, and I'm going to give y'all the giving information. I appreciate y'all giving on YouTube. But I, but I need y'all to give to us direct so we get 100% of the money. 
I'm going to set check and money orders, P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. It's like 8,000 of y'all watching. Y'all, give the cash app, dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal, R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo, RM Unfiltered. Zell, rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. I wasn't joking when I told Natasha, this is $150,000 worth of gear. Staff, SUV, rentals, hotels, food, thousands of dollars. And so, and I and literally, I sent somebody a text, and I said the cash app is... Dollar sign RM unfiltered. And I sent somebody this text and, and I was I was dead serious when I said I was almost in tears listen while Latasha was talking. Because I need y'all to understand what y'all have witnessed tonight. The election of a black United States Senator, the re-election. But the show that you are watching right now, you are, you're not getting this from ABC, from CBS, from NBC. More black people watch MSNBC than any other network. You ain't getting this. You damn sure not getting it from CNN. And damn sure not getting it from Fox News. No black cable network is live right now. BET, nope. TV One, nope. BT Her, nope. <coughs> Clio TV, nope. Aspire, nope. <coughs> Y'all let me know if Revolt is live. I, I've looked around. We're the only black owned media outlet. The Grio TV, nope. Tonight. Spike Lee, Omar Dorsey, Tiffany Crutcher, Damar Solomon Simmons, Conklin Elect Jasmine Crockett, <coughs> Cliff, Cliff Albright, Cliff Albright, Natasha Brown, Mayor Andre Turner, Kelly Fletcher, black folks, Speaking on this election, black folks analyzing this election. My allergies are kicking me up. Black folks speaking to our issues. You cannot say that this show, quality wise, is secondary to any of them. You cannot say that. Ain't secondary at all. From how we look to the content. And the key is, we are not afraid to be black. We're not scared to say we're black. We ain't scared of swag, sirs. You missed that. Oh, man. <laughs> and so, I need y'all to understand I built this. We built this for y'all for nights like this. And that's why black-owned media matters. The nation's first black newspaper, Freedom's Journal, wrote on March 16th, 1827, we wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. On this night... We didn't need MSNBC and CNN and ABC speaking for us. Us being here is us speaking for us. And so I don't care what the haters say. All them new black media people, none of them are here. Not one are here. And so this is why we do what we do. This is why we need your support. 
because we want to go higher and higher and higher. And tomorrow, that's the thing, bro. And I told somebody, I said, yo, I said, as I think about it, I said I was nearly in tears because when I had the vision, this was precisely what I visualized. Nights like this, us being here on the ground, in the building, doing a full-scale show, not using iPhones to give our people yeah. quality black news and information. Yeah, man, it's, it's a beautiful night. I mean, it's so historic to be here, to be here with you and everybody else that you named, and to see that a brother. This a is real, what Greenwood was about. Right, exactly. That's what I was getting to. This is what it would have been like if Greenwood was not bombed and burnt down in 1921 and continued to be oppressed to this very, very day. This is what it means to see us coming together, putting our resources together, fighting to push for one of our best that we can offer in Senator Warnock, a true brother that's part of this community, that's part of, the, of our nation of black people. And it just says something to be here and to see black and white and Asian and men and women, Muslims and Christians and everyone being excited to be represented by our brother named Senator Raphael Warnock someone we can be proud of, and someone we can push to continue to push policies that we need. Because it would have been a travesty if we would have been talking about the other with Herschel Walker being elected. That would have been an embarrassment to our people each and every day. But to be here, Roland, for you to bring this, for the world to see that we have talent, we have skill, and when we have the resources, we can put on the very best productions as anyone else. That's what this night is about overall with you, with, with, with Black, Live, Black Voters Matter, with all the people you talked about, with the Warnock campaign. I mean, he had black people in his campaign at high levels, and that made a difference. Even how we being treated as the media here amongst the other mainstream media, it makes a difference because Senator Warnock said, I want Roland Martin here. I want to give Roland Martin Unfiltered a very prominent space to do what we can do. It all matters. You know, man, I, I, I see the comments from people, and I really need them to understand. And I really need them to understand that this is not normal. No. <laughs> this is not normal. In fact, Deshaun, I want you to shoot a video. I want you to shoot a video of our setup. I'm going to post that. Okay, I want you to shoot it over there, and then come all the way around so they can see it. And the thing is, and I, and I, and 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 how many people understand? I'm not saying this for ego, pat myself on the back. But black media should be here. Absolutely, black newspapers. We should black not. Black networks. We, black radio. I, I, I told I told Demario and Tiffany earlier when I ran the Chicago Defender. Hey, hold on. Get this lady a vacation. Get this lady, Latasha Brown. She needs a vacation. This sister may be single-handedly <laughs> with her partner, oh, Brother Cliff Albright. Latasha they have made this happen. Latasha's going to be on the beach real she soon. Needs, she deserves it. She Don't, deserves it. Look, I always <laughs> see her beach photo. Yeah. She's going to be on the beach somewhere. You ain't got to worry about that. But, but here's a perfect example, y'all, of how I need my black newspapers yep to understand the moment yep 2004 i'm in chicago i just took over as the executive editor of chicago defender we all knew obama was gonna win so i had a thousand copies of the front page of the defender <coughs> mr obama goes to washington the movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Right, right. So when they call the race, we pass it out to folks all in the room. And all the local media held it up. All the local media. Why didn't a single black newspaper think do the same thing? All the black papers in Atlanta, they should have, somebody should have printed a thousand copies. And when a race was called, 
pass it to every media outlet, and they would have held it up, and that black paper would have gotten free marketing all around the country. Yeah, I don't think people really understand how historically significant this is for Brother Warnock to be elected for a full six-year term right. from the South. If, if, if my memory serves me in history, this is the first time since Reconstruction, right, where you had a black senator. A, a black Democratic senator. A black Democratic senator. Well, I don't. I understand. I understand. But he was, he was elected. He was elected. So Tim Scott, South right. Carolina. Right. Well, I said black, not black skin. I, 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 I know what you said. But I know what you said. I, hold on. I understand the context okay. and the nuance. Right. Go well, ahead. Well, it's still historically significant because, you know, he, he, he won two years ago, but that was a two-year term. But now it's a full six-year term. Right. So he can – be his full authentic self. There you go. I'm not saying he wasn't in there fighting on people's behalf. No, but he couldn't. But he could. He be his full authentic self. So with that being said, we're going to celebrate Reverend Warnock tonight, Senator Warnock. But we're going to be showing up at his office saying, "Okay, we put you in. Now we need you to work on our behalf. We right. need George Floyd uh, Police and Reform Act. We need to get rid of qualified immunity. We need more progressive civil rights judges on the bench. We need the reparations to come up and not just a bill to study it, which is something we support with H.R. 40 and my, sister, my Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. But we need the Senate to push that forward. We need you to get reparations for the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre Survivor, three who are still living that I represent over 100, 2108 and 102. We need justice for Black Creek Indians and Black Seminoles, Black Choctaws and Chickasaws who are being disenfranchised, stripped and stolen of their citizenship rights and their benefits that totals tens and hundreds of millions of dollars each and every year. Those are the type of things that we want Senator Warnock to fight on our behalf because we have fought on his behalf, not to just be there, not to have a great party that we have in the night, and it's dope, it's lit up in here, but we want to see real policies and real <coughs> laws that impact the lives positively of black people on a daily basis. Look, you're absolutely right, because um, it's called, and I, and I said this about Obama, and folks got mad at me, I said, not the Sunshine Anderson, um, <laughs> I said it's called return on investment. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not a popularity contest. It's not a beauty contest. This is politics. And for those who don't understand, politics is, uh, simply means who gets what, when, where, and how much, and how. And that's why we elected him, to make sure that we get what we need and deserve as often as possible. That is what it's about. This is politics. This is not a popularity contest. We love Reverend Warnock. We support Reverend Warnock, Senator Warnock. But we need policies to stop the degradation of our people, stop infant mortality, stop uh, uh, diseases rampant in our community, stop putting our brothers and sisters in the criminal criminal uh, penitentiary. Stop these cops from shooting us unarmed or, or shooting us down in the street. We need economic development that helps regular black people, not just if you are already rich and you can take advantage of some type of a tax credit or something like that, but something that lifts the masses of our people out of the condition that we're in right now. The uh, folks, for everybody who keeps asking, Senator Warnock has not spoken yet. We expect him to speak uh, within the next 30 minutes. They probably will bring him out at 11 o'clock, the top of the hour. Um, Y'all let me know. To my, um, to my knowledge, I don't believe that Herschel Walker has given a concession speech yet. Guess so, what? He don't have to either. And so, well, yeah, <laughs> well, first of all, it's going to be a little hard for him to, to even do it. Uh, so we are waiting. And this you know, crowd is waiting. You know what, Roland? Um, for uh, Senator Warnock uh, to come out. And trust me, this room is waiting. They're going to erupt gonna explode. when he comes out. And it looks like. Oh, uh, well, like Herschel Walker talking now. Well, it looks like Herschel Walker is now giving a concession speech. Um, we ain't carrying it. <laughs> you know, oh, Roland, you know. I I'm mean, old. I'm just being straight up. I'm old. I don't give a damn what Herschel Walker got to say. I hear you. I, look, I, 
we y'all let me click. If y'all want to hear Herschel, y'all y'all turn us down and turn your TV up. But I'm not playing that bullshit. Go ahead. Well, this is what I don't understand. I'm an old football player. I don't understand why people got to give a concession speech anyway. You lost, period. You don't have to get up there after you get beaten in a football, basketball game and stand up and say, I recognize that else and such beat me. Hey, you, you have less votes. That's all it is. So concession or not, you lost. Herschel's a football player. He was a really good one. I really liked him when he was just a football player. He understands what it is. He didn't have enough points on the board. Warnock had more points. He lost. End of story, period, point blank. (coughs) Bottom line is, Herschel Walker was a damn fool. (laughs) And the reality is, this race shouldn't have been either that close as it was. right. That that man had no. He should listen to his son. He had no business standing up there. Now I appreciate y'all running the fool, right? Because they they really made a big mistake. I mean, it just shows you how uh, how much de- they devalue Herschel Walker and devalue black people in general. That they will put someone who clearly has some mental uh, issues. He's, I believe he's suffering from uh, CTE. He clearly was unqualified. He, he was not a serious candidate. I mean, when the brother said, when the brother said that China takes our good air and, and sends their bad air over here, that, that's disqualifying. When the brother talks about he's a cop and he brings out a fake badge, that's disqualifying. But it says something to the white supremacist power structure that they didn't care about any of that long as he would carry their water be a shadow senator so they can maintain power that's what they cared about that's why towards the end of the campaign you saw senators like ted cruz and and uh, lindsey graham they would come down and they would sit on each side and, 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 of then, Reverend, and, Walker, graham. and they wouldn't uh, even let him talk attacking her show because if he wins young black kids will become republicans <laughs> Herschel Walker is, you know, he was an embarrassment to, I was embarrassed for him. Uh, but you know what? Let's not talk much more about Herschel Walker because he's a loser. Senator Warnock won this, and this brother, Senator Warnock, you got to give him a lot of uh, credit because he's been through five elections in two years. He went through a primary in 2020. He went through a general election in 2020. He went through a special election in 2020. Then he went through another general that election fool, that in 2020. Done? And he went through the special election in 2020. Yeah, that fool done. And he Short won speech. It. That wasn't even five <laughs> minutes. What else can he possibly say? He probably said, well, time this this old coon to get off the stage. Oh, man. And y'all know, I don't use racial epithets. But he actually said he embraced being called a coon. I mean, that was that was probably the saddest, most. I keep saying it's embarrassing, but you know, I'm gonna say this with all seriousness. His parents couldn't be alive because you cannot tell me that his parents, probably born in the 30s or the 40s, would be able to even show their. My face. producer Carol just hit me. She said he said absolutely nothing. Well, the brother said he didn't mind being called a coon because coons are the smart, a smart animal. I mean, that's just disqualifying, man. Hey, this for Hersham. Hit the Hit road, Jack. Don't, don't come, come back. back. Hey, hey Anthony, give me a shot of the horn I cry. Hit the road, Jack. Don't come back no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Hersham. <laughs> Don't, Don't you come, come back, back no more. more. Somebody said his mama is alive, and I, um, I all seriousness, uh, have no disrespect for his parents. I was just thinking how hurtful it must be uh, to see their son uh, say some of the things that he said, and they probably know that he was being utilized and exploited the same way he's basically been utilized and exploited his entire life from when he played football at Georgia all the way up to now. It was sad. It was unnecessary. And I thank God that it was unsuccessful. Hey, Doc, this whole thing here, brother, is has been one hell of a campaign. 
And as we said, we now get to exhale because Warnock has been there for six years. Yeah. Unlike congressional races that are every two years, right. this is every six years. That's right. I mean, it's a big deal. And we keep saying it over and over and over, but it's time we can get real substantive policies and laws. See, one thing that people don't under, some people don't understand is when you had the 50-50 uh, Senate, that, mean, that meant – that the committees were split evenly, and the Senate has a lot of funky rules, a lot of procedures, and it made it very difficult to move things out of committee, particularly even the judge uh, nominations. But now that they have that two-seat majority, that means that the committees will have a two-seat majority, and they can move things along a lot faster out of the Senate. So, for instance, in Tulsa, we don't have a, U a, a permanent uh, U United States uh, attorney. We have three United States judgeships that are open in the Northern District, and I think we have two in the Eastern District. That's five judges and, and that guess we what? need. And now that, now that Democrats control the Senate, Biden, time to fill those. We need, we need you to fill those seats. One thing that the Biden administration had not been doing, Roland, and you know this, any state would only have two Republican senators. They were not even pushing judges. So states like Oklahoma, Damn Texas, that. Alabama, Mississippi, et cetera, they really wasn't pushing those federal judges. But now we need them to do that, that they have this two-seat majority. we got to flood the judicial branch with as many progressive civil rights human rights-minded judges as possible. And I'm praying to God that Biden has the opportunity to fulfill at least one Supreme Court seat over the next two years because that's been one of our major nemesis throughout this entire process over since the Trump selection. Well, look, man, it, it's a whole lot of work to do. Um, and it, it's, it, it's, it's just stuff to do. And um, bottom line is, man, again, I hope I need everybody watching. This is what happens when black folks put in the work. And I'm glad you said that because what we're seeing now, this is not about work that just happened in November and for this December special election. It is because people have been on the ground organizing in Georgia for a series of years. We have to give shout out to Stacey Abrams. Unfortunately, she didn't make it to the governor's mansion, but her organizing prowess and power and commitment Wow, wow. Helped. My, my dad just texted me, Walker did not congratulate Warnock or mention his name in concession speech. Don't matter. You punk ass lost. <laughs> But like I said, when you win a football game, the loser doesn't have to get up there and say, oh, well, they won. It doesn't matter. You're old news. But let me finish what I was saying, Roland. This is a combination of people putting in the work and putting in the organizing. And that's why black organizations like Stacey Abrams, like Black, Lives Ma black Voters Matter, uh, Black Men uh, Vote, my guy Frank White and Bill Kurt up there in D.C., and many other black organizations that are doing the work day in and day out. They need support. They need monetary support from the Democratic uh, National Convention, other Democratic parties, but also our listeners, because just as we're saying we have to continue to support Roland and other black media, we have to support black infrastructure, black organizations, black entities, and black businesses up and down the line, because that's the only way we can guarantee that we have representation from our perspective, our vantage point, and not watered down by other interests, be it corporate, government, or whatnot. So this is a great night to celebrate, maybe celebrate for the rest of the week. But starting next week, we have to get back to organizing. Back to, because other thing, Roland, you know, they, the, the, the enemy, those on the other side, they don't want to lose. And they're going to try to figure out more ways, more devious ways to make sure that not more Reverend Warnocks are not elected across these United States. They're going to try to do more voter suppression, more gerrymandering, more felony dis dis disenfranchisement, whatever they can do. So we have to get ready for the backlash and get ready to work. Well, you're absolutely right, Doc. Uh, 
Um, all that has to get done. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, I'm live. Huh? Come on. I know, I know. Your hair different. Come on. Yeah, I know that. Get on over here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, folks. You clap your hands, stomp your feet, and give it up for your singer. Going to the stage, y'all. Going to the stage. All right. I'm on rolling live. And Senator Warnock is coming to the stage. We'll do you after he speaks. So we about to listen. It's, it's lit up in here. Georgia. Thank you. I love you too. All right, y'all settle down. I want to say thank you from thank you from the bottom of my heart and and to God be the glory. things that God has done. And after a hard-fought campaign, or should I say campaigns? It is my honor to utter the four most powerful words ever spoken in a democracy. The people have spoken. say that a vote is a kind of prayer for the world we desire for ourselves and for our children. Voting is faith put into action. And Georgia, you have been 
praying with your lips and your legs. With, with your hands and your feet, your heads and your hearts. You have put in the hard work, and here we are standing together. I want to say thank you. And I want to say I want to say thank you to my mother who is here tonight. You'll see her in a little while. But she grew up in the 1950s in Waycross, Georgia, picking somebody else's cotton and somebody else's tobacco. But tonight, she helped pick her youngest son to be a United States senator. My dad has long passed into the light, but he is still very much with us. I watched my dad, a pastor and a small businessman, take care of his family by working really hard with his hands and using his brain. And he picked up old junk cars and loaded them on the back of a rig that the mechanisms of which he designed himself, one on top of the other. And that's how he took care of his family. But on Sunday morning, the man who lifted broken cars lifted broken people. And and convinced them of their value. I would not be here were it not for them. I am a proud son of Savannah, Georgia. A coastal city known for its verdant town squares and its cobblestone streets. Tall, majestic oak trees dripping with Spanish moss bend and beckon the love of history and horticulture to this city by the sea. My roots, like the roots of those oak trees, go deep down into the soil of Savannah and Waycross and Scriven County and Burke County. I am Georgia. I am, I am an example and an iteration of its history, of its pain and its promise, of the brutality and the possibility. But because this is America, and because we always have a path to make our country greater against, against unspeakable odds, here we stand together. Thank you, Georgia. So I want to thank my mother and my late father. I want to thank my siblings who are here. I'm one of 12 in my family. Clearly, my folks read the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. Our family was short on money, but long on love, long on faith. And I want to thank my two darling children.
Chloe and Kayla. Whose brilliance and whose eyes inspired me to work for all of our children. Georgia, I don't want you to miss what you've done. In a moment in which there were folk trying to divide our country and those forces are very much at work right now, Georgia did an amazing thing. In 2021, it sent its first African-American senator and its first Jewish senator to the United States Senate in one fell swoop. who will look at the outcome of this race and say that, yes, you're right, we won. But there are those who would look at the outcome of this race and say that there's no voter suppression in Georgia. Let me be clear. Just because people endured long lines that wrapped around buildings some blocks long, just because they endured the rain and the cold and all kinds of tricks in order to vote, doesn't mean that voter suppression does not exist. It simply means that you, the people, have decided that your voices will not be silenced. Let us not forget, let us not forget that when we entered this runoff, a vestige of the ugly side of our complicated American story, State officials said that we couldn't vote on Saturday. But we sued them and we won. And, and the people once again, once again rose up in a multiracial, multi-religious coalition of conscience you endured the rain, you endured the long lines, and you voted, and you did it because you believe, as I do, that democracy is the political enactment of a spiritual idea. This notion that each of us has within us a spark of the divine, that we were created in the Imago Dei, in the image of God. And if you're not given to that kind of religious language, that's fine. Our tent is big. <laughs> Simply put it this way, each of us has value. And if we have value, we ought to have a voice. And the way to have a voice is to have a vote to determine the direction of your country and your destiny within it. And so we, we stand here tonight on broad shoulders. Our ballot is a bloodstained ballot. We stand here on the shoulders of the martyrs, Schwerner, Cheney, and Goodman, two Jews and an African-American who lost their lives fighting for that great American right to vote. Viola Luiso and James Reeb, a white sister and a white brother who also lost there lies Fannie Lou Hamer, that indomitable, that indomitable Mississippi sharecropper. And my parishioner, God bless his memory, John Lewis.
will one day cross the bridge knowing that there was danger on the other side and yet he crossed that bridge while building a bridge for the future. And now it is on us, the latest generation of Americans and of Georgians, to keep building that bridge, to keep walking that long walk, pushing the nation towards our ideals. And so, Georgia, this is my promise to you. The, pro the work that we must do is difficult. The issues are not simple, they're complex. But here's my promise to you, I will walk with you even as I work for you. Because, because here is what I've learned as a pastor. You can't lead the people unless you love the people. You can't love the people unless you know the people, and you can't know the people unless you walk among the people. You, you cannot serve me if you cannot see me. And so during these difficult days, even as I work on specific public policy proposals and I offer bills and work with my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, to get those bills passed. I just want you to know that I see you. I, I, see, I see you parents as you're trying to put your kids through college and through community college and technical college. I see you students as you're trying to make a way out of no way. I, I see you essential workers fighting for a livable wage, to participate in the prosperity that you create for others. Farmers who are an answer to our most basic prayer, give us this day our daily bread, and yet they struggle to hold on to the farm. Farmers, I see you, and I'm here with you, and together we can work through all of these issues. And I want all of Georgia to know whether you voted for me or not. I get it, but I, I, want, I, I want all of Georgia to know whether you voted for me or not, that every single day I am going to keep working for you. I'm proud of the bipartisan work I've done, and I intend to do more because I actually believe that at the end of the day, we are all Americans. I believe in that American covenant. E pluribus unum. And it is that covenant that drives me to work to lower costs, to lower the cost of prescription drugs, to create jobs all across our state to address the issue of criminal justice reform. Because, because I believe that you can have justice and safety at the same time. So thank you for this high honor. After, after a hard fought campaign, you got me for six more years. quickly do a couple of things. I, I want to thank my amazing campaign staff. Led by led by Quentin Folks. I wanna I wanna thank 
I want to thank my amazing Senate team led by Mark LaBelle and my state team. My state team led by Meredith Lilly. I want to I want to thank Lawrence Bell who had a crazy idea that I should run for the Senate. I laughed and here we are. And I want to thank the amazing people of Ebenezer Baptist Church. Who amidst the attacks stuck with your pastor. Thank you, Ebenezer Church. So let's celebrate for a little while on this mountain. Let's dance because we deserve it. But tomorrow we go back down into the valley to do the work. I know that the days are still difficult. The times are dark, but the light, the scripture says, shines in the darkness, and the darkness overcometh it not. I'm ready to keep doing this work. I can hear my dad of blessed memory say, get up, get dressed, put your shoes on, get ready. Are you ready, Georgia? I'm ready. Stand up for workers, to stand up for women, to stand up for our children. I'm ready to build a stronger Georgia. God bless you. Keep the faith and keep looking up. I'll talk over it. The folks, that was a U.S. Senator. Raphael Warnock addressing uh, all of the people assembled here at this packed ballroom at the Marriott Marquis here in Atlanta. What is a victory celebration tonight? Senator Raphael Warnock became the first black Democratic United States Senator elected or re-elected to the United States Senate since Reconstruction. Folks, this is uh, a huge achievement tonight it was two years ago uh, when he was elected um, when he was elected to the United States Senate and he was elected by the people to fill the unexpired term with Johnny Isaacson who stepped down well tonight Georgia especially black Georgia has sent Raphael Warnock to the United States Senate for the next six years he is a senior pastor Ebenezer Baptist Church. He is my Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity brother. Folks, uh, this has been an incredible, incredible journey. And we have said this over and over again. This is what happens when black folks do what's necessary. And folks, this is why Black Star Network was created for us to be here. I made the appeal earlier, folks. Um, your dollars make it possible for us to be here. Our crew, four members, we've been traveling all across this state since last Monday. We've been in Sandersville, Athens. We've been in Hinesville, Savannah. If y'all want to support us in what we do, don't just hit the like button. We appreciate it. Support us financially. I don't have millionaires and billionaires funding this show. We are independent. We're black owned. We're the only black-owned media outlet here. Blavity, Black Enterprise, Essence, The Grio, none of them are here. We've been broadcasting since 9.30 live. We were early at 6 to 8. Cash App us right now, dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com, rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. Folks, uh, send a check of money order, P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196.
Folks, uh, it all matters. Uh, Demario, I appreciate it. Folks, thanks a lot, baby. Love you. Uh, folks, um, your dollars matter. Uh, we're going to keep doing this work. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep growing. We, we're going to keep going. Um, we're going to keep doing that. Um, and so what you're seeing, you're seeing this is what happens when black folks rise up and we do what we do. This is what happens when we lead. This is what happens when we, this is what happens when we do what we're supposed to do. There you go. Appreciate it. All right, take a selfie there. Uh, so, again, a lot of y'all have contributed already. I appreciate it. You give directly on YouTube as well. But if you give us directly, folks, all the resources go right to us. Uh, and so uh, we said it. You know, we need, we need, need 2,000 people giving us at least 50 bucks this month to raise $100,000. Um, and, y'all, we got more work to do. We got more work to do. Uh, we're going to be covering this stuff and traveling this country. Um, I head to Houston tomorrow, then back to D.C., the studio. I'm in Jackson, Mississippi on s Friday to give the commencement speech to Jackson State University. We're back into Atlanta Sunday for Operation Global Hope Forum, cover Celebration Bowl. This is why we black media must be here. History made tonight in Georgia. History made tonight. The grassroots activists, we featured them on the show. They did an amazing job, an amazing job all around this state, knocking on doors, making phone calls, texting people, having parties, passing out food, passing out water, passing out snacks. I mean, that's what has been going on. When we talk about black empowerment, when we talk about what we can do as a people. We talk about what the ancestors fought and died for. Tonight is that night to send a black man to the United States Senate. Since Reconstruction, since Reconstruction, Ed Brooke, Republican, Massachusetts, Kara Mosley Braun, Democrat, Illinois, Barack Obama, Democrat, Illinois. Cory Booker, New Jersey. Kamala Harris, California. Tim Scott, South Carolina. Raphael Warnock, Georgia. There have been African Americans who have been appointed to field terms. Seven African Americans since the end of Reconstruction elected to the United States Senate, seven, five Democrats, two Republicans. Understand what our power is. Understand what we can do. Understand what happens when we vote our numbers. Understand what happens when we give. No, y'all, in the chat, Chantel Brown is in the house. I'm speaking of the United States Senate. And so what I need you to understand, folks, is we are here chronicling history. We are here telling this story. Joining me right now is NCU folks. She, of course, uh, New Georgia Voter Project, uh, Stacey Abrams Group. NSA was a longtime leader of the organization. NSA, um, just your thoughts. On tonight, our friend Latasha Brown, uh, it's not on us, it's in us that there were people who thought that the 2021 runoff results were a fluke. Um, I think that the state of Georgia and the country needs to understand what the dividends we can realize when you invest in a black electorate, when you invest in a confident, informed, and not voter suppressed black electorate, that we can have the America, we can have the Georgia that we've been talking about, the, the rhetorical America that we talk about, the one man, one vote, the uh, life, liberty, and justice, and the pursuit, like, the pursuit of happiness for all, all of that is possible when you 
invest in, again, an informed black electorate who can hold people accountable and dispense with the nonsense. I'm so glad that we don't have to deal with the Senator Walker. <laughs> like, I'm not, I, I don't think it's possible for me to overstate what that would have done for our movement and what we're trying to build and for this country. So, I you feel know. good. We're celebrating. Um, we worked our plan. We planned our work. Um, and, you know, we sent uh, the senior pastor of America's Civil Rights Church back to the United States Senate. Uh, your fraternity brother, uh, my former board chair and friend, Raphael Warnock. It's a good day to be a black voter in Georgia. It's a good day to be a Georgia voter. And so, you know, a, a lot of folks talk about, and I'm not diminishing her at all, a lot of people talk about Stacey Abrams founding this group, but you just said it. Folks don't realize he was right there. He was yes. a board chair. Right. He was. He was he, he, he was Stacey's successor. So Stacey's the founding board chair, and Senator Warnock um, followed in her footsteps, but was a spokesperson for the organization from day one. In 2014, when people didn't know who we were, and they were looking, you don't register a million black folks, that's not possible. Who are you? Who's funding you? Where you're getting your money? Uh, Senator Warnock was there. Uh, there was zero daylight between us uh, and him, and that, you know, that trend, that relationship continues today. Number one. Number two, um, what I didn't hear tonight, but I think I would be remiss if I didn't say it out loud, was that we all owe a debt to Stacey Abrams, right, for the Georgia, for tilling the soil, for creating these conditions. There is no Senator Warnock. There is no Senator Ossoff. There is no Representative Nakima Williams without the infrastructure that Leader Abrams has built, and I think that that's super important. Uh, I, 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 keep, I, I keep saying this, and I was in um, Sandersville, I was in Hinesville. Adamsville? When I was in Athens. Okay. Um, when I was in Savannah, and I kept saying, I said, folks, when we were in Swainsboro, when we were in Statesboro, I said, folks, if we vote our numbers, this ain't a flu. Right. We can sweep statewide races. 100%. 100%. If we vote our numbers, look at 100%. the current voting totals. Right. If we are voting at 60, 65, 70%, we can run the table. Full stop. Full stop at every level of government, right? And to be very clear with you, Georgia isn't the only state where that is the case, where that is true. Um, I, I'm excited that we get to serve as sort of a proof of concept, right? That there's a clarity now. I know that people from both parties have a hard time accepting it, but there's no path to victory in Georgia without a deep investment and a prioritization of black voters. Republicans know it. Brian Kemp certainly knew it, right? That, and I don't know if America, I don't know if the major political parties are uh, prepared for that, have wrapped their heads around that, that we can continue to do this. We can continue. We can have nice things. If you know, recognize who your base is, invest in your base, period. This is the future. The multiracial democracy that people have been writing about and talking about, it's here. It's here in Georgia today. You know, um, I had somebody say in the chat here, both parties not going to do anything. And my point is, our job is to make them do it. Full stop. That's what's next. I said, I, I always say, Election night is the end of one, end of one process, and tomorrow is the beginning of another. Absolutely. And also, what is a party without its people, right? Like a party is an organizational structure that it is literally the people who make up the platform, who determine the priorities, who determine how it's resourced, who vote in primaries and determine who represents the party and who, who's the standard bearer. So... What are you doing? Who are you organizing? A party isn't a living thing. It is made up of people. 
And so we don't get to take our foot off the gas. We don't get uh, to absolve ourselves of accountability. You elect people, and then you hold their feet to the fire and make sure that they go to Washington, D.C., or to your state capitol to do your work. Full stop. You've hired these folks, right? And I don't hire people and then not care about their job performance. What part, who runs an organization? Who runs a business where you hire people and don't check in to see if they're doing their job? I, I, I've made a couple of um, money appeals tonight explaining to people that this costs money. Absolutely. I had Latasha Brown on saying the exact same thing. And what folks need to understand is activists, grassroots people, can't do this work for free. Yep. And so we've got to be willing to take our $1, $5, $10, $20, $25, and, and tie to the effort Absolutely. because that is real, hard, laborious, right. tedious right. work trying to convince that one person to one listen to two register mm -hmm. to three then vote right right so we keep saying vote 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 no 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 it's a lot you gotta get to even get right. to voting right well and it, and I'm happy to hear that you're making that appeal to your audience. I think that it's really important that we invest in the things that are important to us. And in this moment where misinformation and disinformation, in this moment where misinformation and disinformation are literally poisoning the wells that Gen Z young people get information about government and the world around us, having trusted messengers, having independent media that is covering black America, that is covering politics, clearly is so important. I think that we're going to be headed into some dark days where just lies, uh, mistruths are going to be flying and having a voice that helps break down what's happening that people can trust and rely on becomes very, very important. I think that's our secret sauce for sure as community organizers is people know that when they see New South Super PAC coming or New Georgia Project coming that we love them, we share their values, and I'm coming to give you information that you can do something with. I think that people feel the same way, if not more, about Roland Martin. Like, the journalist, the brand, the man, and it's so important that we had it, particularly at this moment and going into the 2024 election. And see, the, the thing that we have to understand, I, I, Spike Lee was here earlier, and I told him, we, we were quoting lines from Malcolm X, and I told him my favorite line is a scene where the cop says, okay, you came and got what you want, now break this up. He says, no, I'm not satisfied. Mm, I do remember that line. And, and my deal for us is I'm not satisfied with just Warnock. No, no. I'm not satisfied with just Booker. Come on. I'm not satisfied. No, I want all of it. Come on. I'm overcharging them for what they did to the cold crush, right? Like there, when there's a, um, an activist sister of ours, her name is Mary Hooks. Um, and she often talks about avenging um, the atrocities that our ancestors have suffered and also sort of defending or making ourselves worthy of the veneration of future generations. And you're right, like a 51st seat in this climate is not enough. Not when we are a couple of days away from the Supreme Court deciding the Moore decision, which could completely gut the Voting Rights Act. That, uh, you know, Dobbs versus Jackson completely gutted Roe versus Wade. Or, or, Affirmative or, or action or, is or, on the or, table. Or even the case out of North Carolina with this strange legal theory the independent state legislator theory is the more case it's going to be a problem anthony so i mean you're right i mean so 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 what we are dealing with 
I mean, we're dealing with some major battles. These Republicans, they are going to be pissed. They are pissed tonight. Yes, but and, also, and, and, and they are going to try to change more laws right, right. to make it harder to register and to vote. Absolutely. I have a slightly different take. I feel like the majority of them were super cynical. They knew that Herschel Walker was not that bright, that if they could get a puppet in there to do their bidding, um, that that would be all right with them, and it would allow them to hold on to power. I don't think that people are that upset. I think they think that black folks are stupid, and we're not. Um, And I think that, yeah, they tried some stuff, and it didn't work. Um, and you're absolutely right, though. They're coming back, and they're coming back stronger. They're like the gremlins, and there's more of them. So right. And yeah. so for us, um, we rest. Yes. We take a deep breath. We drink some water. Um, we get our voices back. Um, 100%. We try to get seven, eight hours of sleep. Ooh. We try to eat a real meal. Ooh. And then it's back to work. Back at it. Chop wood and carry water. Before the revolution, we was chopping wood and carrying water. After the revolution, we chop wood and we carry water. Right? Like that's one foot in front of the other. I believe that with my whole heart. Right. But I'm going to celebrate the wins, though. Insane. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank a bunch. You. Keep keep fighting. Thank you. Folks, it has been uh, an unbelievable night here in Atlanta. Tonight, we saw the re-election of Senator Raphael Warnock. We were live earlier from 6 to 8. We went live again at 9.30. Five and a half hours of coverage uh, tonight. Um, No other black-owned media has been here doing what we're doing. Um, Folks, I've said it again. For you to support what we do, your dollars make it possible. Uh, I've called for us to get to do, you know, a hundred thousand dollars this month. If two thousand fans give, it'll actually happen. And so, um, y'all help us do this. We want to be all over the country. We want to cover the stuff nobody else covers. We want to speak truth to power. Y'all can help us. Join our Bring the Fuck fan club. I don't have millionaires and billionaires sending us checks. It would be awesome if somebody sent us a million dollars a year to fund what we do. Make my life a hell of a lot easier. But that ain't the case. But every dollar y'all give has made it possible for us to buy this equipment, to pay staff, to travel. Pay, the bodies pop up tables. So, folks, we are building something here. We are building a black owned media company. We are building a black network. Our 24 hour streaming channel launches next month. Launches next month. That is happening. And so, Check and money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app is at dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Pay, uh, Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at Roland Martin Unfiltered. Dot com. Uh, y'all have been giving tonight. I have been seeing it. I have been seeing the emails. It is amazing. I appreciate every single person that has donated. We had we hit the ten thousand mark on YouTube. We're being suppressed on Facebook. I saw six hundred twenty-seven on Facebook. I got one point three million followers on Facebook. It's no way in hell. We got 627. But that's why they used to download the Black Star Network app. We own it. We control it. We don't have to ask anyone for permission. And so we're on Apple TV. 
Android TV, uh, uh, Apple phone, Android phone, Roku, Amazon Fire, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. In six hours, I'm on a plane to Houston to do a walkthrough at a venue, uh, and I can't wait to announce what we're doing. I can't wait to announce it. Then I fly back to D.C. I'll be in studio tomorrow night for the show. Then I go to Jackson on Thursday, give a commencement speech on Friday. Then back to D.C. We're back in Atlanta on Sunday for a whole week. So, folks, let me thank all of you for watching. Let me thank the whole crew, Deshaun, our driver, Antoine, Anthony, our crew back uh, in Washington, D.C., full team effort. We've been on the road since last Monday, and tonight is why we did it. So, again, I want to thank all of you. Folks, I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see if we can get some rest. But, again, support us in what we do, folks, because we are doing this for the culture, because we are the culture. Black-owned media matters. Thanks a bunch, folks. Y'all take care. Congratulations to my alpha brother, U.S. Senator Raphael Warnock, re-elected to the United States Senate. Holla.